Welcome back to Landmarks Discovered. In this episode, we'll transport you to Venice in visiting 181 Clarendon and discuss Palm Beach's response to its own Aqua Alta. Claridon was designed by Marion Sims Wyeth for Frederick and Julie Glidden in 1924. It was completed two years later in 1926. 181 Claridon was built on a plat known as Vita Serena. The Italian theme continues to run through the house in its style inspired by Venetian architecture and in its name Bel Reposo, which in Italian means nice rest. And we continue this Italian theme in the historic boat basin that is next to the house. Yes, and that's one of the few remaining in town. They used to be uh, more prevalent, and we can imagine um, back to the time of the 20s that it must have been such an incredible way to arrive at some of these grand estates for dinner. And Julie Glidden was very involved in the local charities and was one of the founders of the Animal Rescue League. And it was known that when she hosted teas at her house, she used to have a authentic gondola from Venice parked there. And there's actually two other landmark properties in town that have a similar relationship to the water. One of the things that is very unique about this house, which is today known as Villa Tremonto, is just how close it is to the seawall. The two other landmarks that also have that same sighting is 800 South County Road and Casa de Leone, which is at the end of Worth Avenue. Both of those properties are designed by Meisner, and Villa Tremonto, or 181 Clarendon, is the only Venetian villa designed by Marion Sims Wyeth. The boat basin really complements the design of the house, which leads us to believe that it was done by Wyeth when the house was built. This house really showcases Wyeth's ability to adapt to the client's needs, and you can really see that because it is the only Venetian villa in the town of Palm Beach done by Wyeth. Yes, and we know that Wyeth actually spent quite a bit of time in Italy. When he graduated from the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in 1914, he actually went to Italy to work as the secretary to the American ambassador there. We have in our archives some really beautiful watercolors that he did while he was there, and there's one in particular that has a gondola scene with a beautiful villa. So we know that he has these personal reference points that he likely referred to in designing this property. Not only is 181 Clarendon unique in that it's one of the few Venetian style villas within the town, it also was one of the very first properties to be elevated in response to flooding. And we had the opportunity to sit down with the architect Jean Pandula to talk about the process and what's involved. Jean has been involved in preservation in Palm Beach since the late 1970s when the preservation ordinance was first adopted and gives an interesting perspective on how the program has evolved. Well, clearly here in the town of Palm Beach there were several architects who were the genesis of the town's uh, aesthetic roots and Wyeth being one of them. And I think one of the things that particularly uh, draws me to Wyeth is his, his thinking, his cerebral thinking about how he approached projects and architecture in general, um, and that it was a, um, um, not just a profession, but also a lifestyle of his, of how he really got into enjoying his clients and working with them and producing uh, products that were um, special for each and every one of them. One of the things that makes this building so unique and actually pleasant to be in is the way it's been crafted, and notwithstanding the uh, the varying degree of ornament on the building, 
uh, of forms that have been used, the way they've been knitted together, open balustrades, closed balcony railings, radius arches, pointed arches, run stone motifs, cast stone motifs, paving patterns, all of it is, is uh, united in, in forming uh, one theory, one, one building designed by itself. Um, and you know, normally when you see that many features uh, put together, they're less successful. But in this case, it's, uh, it's turned out to be a very harmonious whole. What makes the Villa Tremonto here at 181 Corendon Avenue so unique uh, is that it was built as an Italianate building, almost a, a Venetian style that related to the water, much like a, like a building in Venice would relate, uh, which was fabulous for many years of its uh, beginning lifespan here. Um, but as flooding began to take issue here in town and water levels began to rise more on a more frequent basis with the king tides and so on and so forth, uh, what used to be a yearly or semi-yearly issue with flooding here became much more prevalent. Um, so previous owners of the building took it upon themselves to actually do a tremendous project and uh, one of the first projects in town here to raise it up, raise the floor elevation, which has been very successful. The actual process of elevating a building, depending on where you're at in the process, is either tremendously hard or doesn't really offer that much of a uh, hindrance to you. Uh, people that do this all day, every day for a living understand what goes into doing it, and it's a very simple solution. Um, if, it's, if it's new to you, or if, if you're a professional on the outside, or even a client on the outside, it looks horrendous. So it's not always that bad, though. Uh, again, I go back to every, every site, every building is, is different. The physical constraints of the building, the size of the site, the water table on the site, um, actually the physical conditions that might happen while you're in the process of doing this. If you get rainstorms or a flooding surge or something like that, it might offer a delay to the project. It might offer a financial hindrance to the project. So it's a very, it's like peeling back skins of the onion. You, you always find something when you take it to the next stage, uh, unknown conditions of a building. So it, it takes a, an awareness, a, a thought process, and a willingness to just uh, believe that the best is going to happen sometimes when you, when you, once you start it, it's all in. The physical aspects of a building come into play, um, whether it's a one-story building or two-story building, whether it's frame construction or hollow clay tile. So it's, uh, it's a ginger process. Uh, wood frame buildings are generally more forgiving than hollow clay tile. They get a little bit more spring in them. But again, for people that do this as, as their profession on a daily basis, um, they're aware of what kind of uh, support needs to be done. And uh, once the initial evaluation is done, the physical work is actually not that difficult. It's, it's uh, kind of by the book raising of the building. So there is a lot more involved after a building is raised to set it back down on its new foundation, its new home. In many cases, um, it's a simple, straightforward thing to do. The building is um, not really taken apart on the inside to accomplish what needed to be done. But in some cases where the site is small or um, there are certain foundation conditions, um, the raising of the building has, has got a methodology where um, beams are slipped through the middle of the house. Um, the lifting system is is kind of concocted or, or based on drilling through the floors with tie rods and lifting up from the bottom. So sometimes a good amount of damage is actually done to the original fabric of the building, and that needs to be repaired or replaced, as well as you know reconnecting all of the mechanical systems, site drainage system, site walls, grading, landscaping, all of that comes later. So it's a fairly comprehensive process. What I know about this house, when it was originally raised, uh, it was part of a, an overall renovation of the house. And I would use the term renovation as opposed to restoration. So a lot of the original materials were replaced, um, which they needed to be after a good period of time. The mechanical systems were updated, but there were also some aesthetic features that were kind of applied to the building. So its Venetian theme was kind of lost behind a uh, an applied facade, if you will, of uh, some French Regency moldings and stylings and trims and things of that nature. Um, so it was several years later with a new owner uh, that those things had been removed and, and the house is much closer now to its, its, original, uh, its original feel, its original design. 
unless the project is a tax abatement project here in town, uh, the commission actually has no review of interiors. Um, and I think our work on this project kind of took advantage of that in a sense. While we did pair the floor plan black uh, and many of the details, the coffered ceilings, the handrails, back to what the original intent of the building was, enough had evolved over the years where it really didn't make sense to do a pure restoration on the project. So things like the handrail that needed to uh, at the main stairway that needed to be um, updated and repaired, we um, we interpreted what the original design was and added small features to make that happen. The same with light fixtures, they weren't an exact copy of what was there, but more of an adaptation to fit into what the house had become over its many years of existence. I think one of the things we need to come to grips with in the future um, is maybe being willing to lose some some buildings that we thought were important in the community or altering how we think they should be uh, maintained, maybe being willing to accept some aesthetic changes to them. Um, in some cases, I mean, you go back in history, there were some philosophical leanings that buildings shouldn't even be maintained. They should just be left to erode over time, and when they're done, they're done. Um, so maybe certain aspects of the historic preservation program are actually trying to force fit something into a uh, into the real world now, where you know we we need to learn that maybe some of these places actually have lifespans, and uh, saving them in, into perpetuity maybe is not possible anymore. Maybe giving them another 10 or 20 or 50 years might be enough, or maybe in 50 years something the technology will change, the awareness will change. Um, and there'll be new solutions and, and we can start again. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Landmarks Discovered. In our next episode, we'll visit another property that contributes to the architectural heritage of the town. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive notification when we upload new videos.